What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, I've missed you guys. It's been a couple weeks. Good to see you. It, it has. It's been a while. So, I know. I'm going to tell you guys a quick little story before we start this interview, because I've had a, a crazy 24 hours. So I... I was TDY to Orlando for a conference, uh, the Air Force Sergeants Association Conference, which is awesome. Lots of people that I uh, used to be stationed with like a family reunion. So, you know, a family reunion is how it gets after all the business. It gets, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, right? But I knew I had to come back today uh, to Dallas for this uh, interview. And so I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna, I had a 0600 flight and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull a Vegas, right? you got an early flight in Vegas. You're like, you know what? I'm just going to stay up all night. I'll sleep <laughs> on the plane and I'll fly in. And so I, I get to the airport, the, the planes broke, broke down. And now we have to switch gates, switch planes, two hour delay. <laughs> I'm like, Oh my goodness. I got, I, I had plenty of time before, but now I'm pushing it against the clock. So I had the OJ Simpson through the airport, the old OJ, not the, not the new OJ, the old OJ, uh, from the Hertz rental car commercials. And, uh, but I did all that to say I made it with like 30 minutes to spare. Uh, and, and of course, I'm going to do that for our next guest because he's freaking amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. We got we got a, a man of many talents. And so, Julie, please introduce today's guest. If, first of all, I'm, I'm glad you made it for the show. It would have been really hard to do Chief Chat without you. Without a chief, right? That's it would have been hard. <laughs> and you know what? I'm glad. I'm glad that you didn't tell Julie all that in advance that you just surprised her right now with that. Yes. <laughs> Listen, my job is to control Julie's blood pressure. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. I appreciate you. We are so excited to welcome today's guest today. You know him best from his 15-year career in Major League Baseball with the Oakland A's and the San Francisco Giants, which included a Cy Young Award and two World Series championships. So since retiring from the MLB, he's followed another passion of his, music, and he's here today to perform live for us. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Barry Zito. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How are you guys? Good. Great to I'm, be here on with fumes, you I'm on fumes right now, Barry, so I'm, I'm good, though. <laughs> Get some more coffee in you, maybe a Diet Coke or two. You'll be good. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you for the remedy. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I got mine right here. Where is it? At? Oh, yeah. I got it right here, buddy. <laughs> well, Barry, thanks so much for taking time out to join us. And everybody watching, you know what to do. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Share your love with Barry in the comments. And any questions, we'll read those live. We've got some great upcoming guests for you, so make sure you follow our page and turn on your notifications to see your fave celebrities and more. Well, Barry, man, thank you so much for joining us on Chief Chat today. Absolutely, it's it's great to be with you guys. I have a heart for uh, for the military, for veterans, for all of it. So it's that's just been since I was a kid. Awesome, awesome. So can you tell our viewers where you're calling us from? Yes, uh, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, um, in my home studio, my dream studio that I got to build after I retired. And uh, yeah, I, I was raised in Southern California, um, but baseball actually brought me out here. And I played for the AAA team here in 2015, uh, which was for the A's at that point, um, and then got called up to Oakland for like the last month of my career, uh, which was pretty cool to end, you know, and start um, on the Oakland A's mound. And then, uh, yeah, we just never went back to San Diego. I I honestly thought I'd never leave California, but Nashville's pretty special. Oh yeah, no, it's it's uh we've had a few guests uh, that that are living in Nashville, and they're all musicians. Like every, it, Nashville's just full of music, and it's, it's a beautiful city. Yeah, it really is. Barry, you've had not only one but two successful careers. First as a professional baseball player, and now as a musician. Can you tell us about the transition from the world of sports to the world of music? Yeah, the, um, you know, they have some similarities, right? You're performing, you're in front of people. Uh, but I would say the biggest difference is that when you're playing sports, you're more concerned with, you know, your opponent on the field who's essentially trying to take food off your table, right? And, um, and then in music, you know, you need, you need the audience, right? You're trying to connect with them. You're trying to emote um, these songs that are from your heart, whether you're performing or writing or whatever. And, um, 
And so I think in baseball, you know, if there was no fans at all, right, we would still have to go out there and do our job. But in music, if there's nobody there, it's like, all right, well, I'm just going home too. Um, and that was kind of a, that was a different thing, you know? And then I think too, in baseball, having to go out on the mound and really be like, you know, tough and like, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to get these guys, right? And you kind of get all your, you know, you get on your armor, right? Of like what you have to do. But then in music, it's the opposite. You're like ripping your heart open and I think the more honest you are in your music and the more like flaws you have, the more human you seem and that connects with people. Um, I think in baseball or sports, people don't care about human. They're like, you know, do the job, get it done, right? We're seeing what's happened with Simone, Simone Biles in the Olympics right now. Like we're seeing that she has a human side to her and God bless her for taking care of her mental health, you know, and she can't perform. But um, I think in music, we need to, we need to feel that humanness, you know? Absolutely. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. So, but I have to ask you a question about your time on The Masked Singer. Uh, you yeah. competed on the third season and finished in fourth place. So what was that experience like? Yeah, that was the trip. Um, you know, because when I when I started <laughs> music here, I really just started writing songs here in Nashville for like two or three years um, after retirement. And then I took out a couple, a couple years to write my book. So I kind of stopped writing songs at that point and really went into music production while I was writing the book. Um, and then now I've come back into it, right? And I'm really doing the production thing and writing more pop music, which is where I'm, I'm really excited about. And then we got this call to be like, hey, do you wanna go perform on this show? And <clears throat> at that point, I'd kind of heard of it, but I wasn't like a huge fan, I hadn't watched it. And uh, then I started watching the show and hadn't answered you know, them yet and I'm like, terrified i'm like oh my gosh they want me to go put on this funny costume and dance and have choreography and sing live like this is insane like you know i was terrified and um, my wife was super supportive she's like oh you're gonna grow so much from this experience so i went and did it and the way that they shot it um because it's not live right the filming's not live but the singing is um we did three episodes in the first weekend of shooting. And I honestly was like convinced I'm not making it through three episodes. Like there's no way I'll just show up, like put on the Rhino, go home. Um, <laughs> and I, I can't believe that I went, you know, I was on the show for six or seven weeks of shooting, which was like almost to the end. I mean, I was like, I was floored that like, I got that far. I mean, floored. <laughs> you were so good. I love, I loved your performances on that show. You were really, really good. Oh, well, thank you. And I you was know, like, I didn't something... know he could sing. <laughs> <laughs> they had a great voice coach that really helped me. Um, but I'll tell you, there was something really cool about um, having that mask on, right? Because it wasn't like you were just out there in front of people. Like you were still kind of hiding. Um, but I think if I didn't have a mask and I was just out there, I probably would have clammed up, you know, and, <laughs> and probably lost the first episode. Mm. So, so how, how hot was the rhino costume? That's what I want to know. Oh, God. It was a disaster. It was like sweating and like, you know, the microphones like shorting out my ears. And um, and I'll tell you, the rhino was visibility is a big issue when you have some of these costumes. Now, uh. I was going up against like the night angel and the astronaut and their their masks. They had full they were looking through like mesh things and they had full visibility. My costume was like, you know, I'll do it this way. It was like this big. And I had like two rhino nostrils that I could look through straight, the size of a quarter. And then I had my mouth, but I could only see down like at a 45 degree angle. So I'm walking on stage, literally can't see straight and I'm only looking at the ground. And there was one time during rehearsal when I actually do, I was doing my choreography in rehearsal and I almost stepped right off the stage, you know, four or oh, five man. feet. And like all the assistants were like, no, stop. You know, and they're getting ready to catch me. So it was like, it was pretty intense. I'm not gonna lie. Wow. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. So, so can you um, we we kind of talked about the the differences between uh your baseball career and your music career, but can you kind of yeah. talk to us like what skills can that you were transferable from 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 uh baseball to actual music? Yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, I don't know if they're skills. I mean, I would like to think they are, but I think things more esoteric things like dealing with failure. You know, yeah. I think that's probably the greatest skill that we can have in life is to to mess up or to not achieve what we wanted to achieve and not have it just like bring our whole world down. Um, 
so that you know you know i really had a lot of that in san francisco specifically of like dealing <laughs> with that and you know I, I call them failure muscles like i got my failure muscles really big um so that has really helped me because music is not um it's not an overnight success thing it's a very long hard road and you just keep your head down and you do what you do and so i think that perseverance is probably the biggest thing that i could carry over um and i think also you know, um, when I would take the mound and really just be concerned with what am I in control of, you know, what can I do today um, and focus on that, uh, I usually pitched pretty well. Um, when I started focusing on what was happening 60 feet away, okay, what's the hitter going to do? What are the fans going to think if I win or lose? What's the coach going to do, right? All the expectations, I was like a disaster. Um, and so I think that applies too to music is like, you know, Hey, do you guys like me? Do you guys want to watch? Or is it like, Hey, I really, I'm not concerned with that. I can't control that. But what I can control is like, I can have a great time playing a song. Like I can do that. You know, it kind of goes back to the, like the 12 step, like serenity prayer, right? Oh, yeah. Grant me this serenity to accept the things I can't change, change the things that I can. So, um, which 12 step played a huge role in my life too. And, uh, I had failed so many years as a giant, you know, and got left off the World Series roster and all these things. Uh, the twelve step really kind of led me to God in a way. So that's awesome. So did did you uh, like have? Did you play in the locker room at all, or did you have like a guitar or something that? Because I'm sure I know uh, before each game or normally during sports, you know, everybody's got their music that they're kind of zoning in on and, and and getting hyped on, and I'm just like. Well, I'm pretty sure you had your favorite artists that you listened to, but did you ever kind of play in the in the locker room at all? A lot, yeah. We, um, you know, when I was with the A's, I had this connection um, at this guitar company called Taylor Guitars, which is funny because my first guitar I ever bought my was is still the one I'm going to play today. Um, but all the guys were like, like it was like Rich Harden and Tim Hudson and Ted Lilly and. Um, all these guys, you know, they could afford the nice guitar and I had this really good hookup, like, you know, 50% off, right? We were getting the yeah. artist rate. Um, it's not like the big artists need the discounts anyways, right? But go figure. Um, so we, you know, we had guitars sent to the clubhouse and these guys are like, cool, man, like, can you show me how to play, you know? So we, we would be out on the road, you know, before a night game and I'd go to Tim Hudson's room or whatever and we'd be jamming and I'd teach him some chords or some music theory or whatever. And, um, you know, most of those guys, the guitar just ended up getting dusty the rest of the season. They didn't play it. But <laughs> a couple of them, uh, Matt Kane was a guy who I played with um, with the Giants. You know, Matt still plays. He still enjoys the guitar. Um, and so, you know, I was but I was like the house, uh, you know, guitar teacher, essentially. for gotcha. the season. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. And you're in your studio, so I think you're going to play for us today. Can you yeah. tell us about, tell us about Broke It? Yeah. So, um, you know, essentially when I came to Nashville, I started to write country music. Um, even though I hadn't grown up listening to country, I actually met a, a, um, a beautiful Southern girl. She was from South Missouri and we got married. And so um, when I was with the Giants, we were dating and she played me country music and I never realized how beautiful all the lyrics were in country songs. You know, I was always a music rhythm, melody. You know, I, I never heard words. I just heard all the music. Um, and so my wife turned over to me, turned to me after she played this song and she's like, wasn't that an amazing story? And I was like, I didn't listen to a word of it. And I was like, <laughs> she's like, you didn't? I mean, she's in tears. And I was like, wait, play it again. And we played it again. It was a song by Keith Urban called Stupid Boy. Um, and I played it again. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. And so she helped me kind of start to understand how great lyrics are in music. And so, you know, it's funny. I came here and started writing country to pitch to other artists. Um, and it's kind of a, it's called being an, an outside songwriter, right? You're not the artist. You're just writing to pitch songs. And so I got a couple small cuts from some artists and um, made a, an, a, an EP, which is like a short record, a short album of a lot of the songs I'd written. Um, but my heart has always been in more R&B and funk and pop and those things because um, my parents actually both worked for Nat King Cole in the 60s. And so I had a jazz background growing up, right? All this music was just like poured over me. Um, and so after I wrote my book and got into music production, um, you know, I really started to just make the music I love. And, you know, the lyrics, you know, probably aren't going to lead people to tears, but if it gets them out of their seat and they're dancing, then then it's a win. You know, that's how I see it. So, um, 
you can always bring in great co-writers to write great lyrics. That's how I see it. You know, I'm, that's just not my strong suit, but it's been fun writing some of these songs um, from my heart, you know, and, and eventually the goal is to start to collaborate with great writers and to, you know, produce young artists and things like that. So. Awesome. Oh, and I guess the story behind Broke It, which is um, a story of essentially my wife, which is funny, she'd probably not like this if I had told you guys, but we were dating for a couple months in 2010 and she had this ex-boyfriend who she kind of didn't patch everything up with. And so out of nowhere, she broke up with me, like completely like the guillotine. Like I had, I had fallen asleep on her bed and she was like reading some lines. She was doing some acting stuff back in the day and I woke up kind of in the nap and She's like, I can't do this anymore. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like the script? You don't want to read that? She's like, no, like us. And I was like, what? <laughs> like it was wow. out of left field. And so the song is basically about someone get that got, you know, broke up with and they're in total denial. Like they're like, I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine. But like really they're in a total mess, you know? Um, and I feel like when you get your heart broke, you're just, you toggle from like, I'm totally fine. Oh, I'm a disaster. No, I'm totally fine. No, absolutely. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of the impetus. We would love to hear it. Are you, you want to play it for I'm, us? I'm, I'm, I'm still locked in right now. I'm like, hold on, let me let me, yeah. let me see what this story is all about. <laughs> yeah, but it's all delivered. It's all. De uh, can you hear me right here on this one? Huh? Can you we hear got me on this mic? Okay. Oh yeah. I'm good. This microphone's a lot better. Um, but yeah, it's all delivered into a, a package of you know. Now this is acoustic, but the the version that I put out that's on you know Spotify or whatever is. Definitely a lot more exciting than just a guitar, but it's really fun to play uh, on guitar because this is how my songwriting career started, just on guitar. So, so this is called Broke It. I can't remember much about that Tuesday night. You might have told me that your flame had flickered out. If I recall, I thought our fire was burning bright, burning bright. Then I think you said you didn't want to talk it out. Yeah, you cut it clean, but it went to the bone. Did you ever love before you had your doubts? I still don't know, but I'm not trapped in the past. No, I never look back. I'm barely aware that my heart's still coping It's never been better ever since the day it broke it I'm doing fine, yeah No, I don't count the days since I last saw your face Sometime this decade I have a heart wide open It's never been better ever since the day it broke it Ever since the day you broke it only think of you on days that end in Y. I only drink alone until they cut me off. And all my friends don't ever say that they think I might need to stop. Cause I'm not trapped in the past, no, I never look back. I'm barely aware that my heart's still coping. It's never been better ever since the day it broke it. I'm doing fine, yeah No, I don't count the days since I last saw your face Sometime this decade I'll have a heart wide open It's never been better ever since the day you broke it Ever since the day you broke it Yeah, I might still be lost in your eyes And always staring off the horizon waiting 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 for the sun to start shining but i'm not trapped in the past uh -uh. oh no i never look never look back because it's never been better ever since the day you broke it i'm doing fine yeah no i don't count the days since i last saw your face Sometime this decade I'll have a heart wide open It's never been better Ever since the day you broke it Ever since the day you broke it Alright Wow
<laughs> man, take Barry back, man. You can't, you can't, leave, you can't leave anybody to that after you hear that song. <laughs> Got it. Oh man, man, that was that was amazing. Honestly. It was oh, man. fantastic. You sounded well, really I got to I got to thank you guys because um you know writing songs is different when you are kind of producing them in the computer. You know, you bring in the drums and you get all the fun sound effects and the bass guitars and all that good stuff. And then you kind of write the song and then you record the song and it's like thanks to you guys, I actually had to learn how to play this song um because <laughs> it's I what like I didn't write this like I used to write my country like sitting around on a guitar like I wrote it more in the computer and then I'd like sing a verse and whatever so even though the song was all recorded I never actually played it start to finish on an instrument so it's oh, been man. a fun week of practicing for this gig so so thank oh you Oh my gosh that. <laughs> wow that was a military exclusive then That thank was you. that was <laughs> That was the first time this song's ever been performed that's right <laughs> yeah, no, it's so, so for, for me, you know, I'm I grew up in the '90s R&B kind of wave, and uh, yes. like I said, having that that music with that substance and and heartbreak and love, like that's that's right up my alley, man. So uh, I, I oh. definitely appreciate you you uh, writing to to that to that feel to ha that feel good music. Yeah, oh that genre, dude. I mean, that's like some of my favorite, like New Edition and oh, you know, yeah. Johnny Gill and Bobby Brown and all that stuff for me. Well, is... well we we got a couple of nine, '90s R&B artists coming on the show. We got um, we got Albie Shore. Uh, oh, we, we booked. We got um, Genuine. Genuine's coming on as well. Oh, come on. And yeah, we, we got a few others that we're trying to. Uh, no, Brian McKnight. We got Brian McKnight coming. And oh, uh, I on. absolutely love Brian McKnight. Oh yeah, dude, yeah. Brian McKnight. Mm -hmm. Jeez, that's amazing. Well, Barry, um, you kind of mentioned this right before your performance, but uh, your parents both were involved with music and worked with Nat King Cole. So how did growing up in a musical environment lead you to this current path? Did that have any impact? It did, yeah. You know, I was always like the guy when I came up to the Oakland A's, um, I was always the guy that they were like, oh, he's like eccentric and kind of weird. And it's like, no, like I just came from a musical family or like I just like to surf, you know, it's it's not that weird. But um, so, <laughs> you know, but yeah, so like people didn't realize that I had come from like my first love was music. I came from a musical family. My sister went to Berkeley in Boston, a, school, a music school. And, you know, my mom was a singer with Nat. My dad was a conductor. And so. Um, somehow an athlete came out of this like very creative, you know, musician family. And I think that was the weirder thing, right? That an athlete came out of that. Um, so really I'm just like returning to my first love. Um, but something that my father always told me, which is funny, and especially if, if I say this in front of musicians, he was like, don't go into the music industry. <laughs> He's like, if you want to make a living, don't do it. Um, you know, and he always said, you know, it, you could be the next Michael Jackson, but if you didn't have the right machinery behind you to push you, right? And things are changing now with social media and, you oh, know, yeah. streaming music and all that. But back in the day, you couldn't, you know, if you didn't have a record label, you couldn't, nobody would hear your music. Um, but with pitching, he said, listen, they send baseball scouts around the world to find guys that have good pitching stuff going on. And he's like, he's like fastball, curveball, change up. You master that, you'll be good. And so, uh, you know, my father's passed and, and my mother too, but you know, it, I just wish I could have him around as a, this wellspring of musical knowledge now that I'm so immersed in music, you know? So that's, that's the one kind of bummer about it, you know? Yeah, yeah well, I mean, um, his, you know, their legacy is definitely embedded in you right now and, and you can just tell. So, um, man, that's, that's awesome. Um, so this past, you know, year and a half has been kind of crazy for the world, right? Uh, with with COVID and so how, how did COVID affect you um, uh, probably personally and as, as a musician? Yeah, COVID was, you know, um, it was really disturbing to our family because my wife um, has dealt with immuno stuff uh, for many years. And so, you know, we were really scared um, specifically for her to get it. And um, and then my son, my I have three sons, my seven-year-old was also going through immunocompromised system. Um, or situation um, and oddly like we were always the ones in our friend group that were like triple locked down like we don't go anywhere we don't see anybody and ironically I contracted COVID um, just after Easter of this year and I had only gone a couple on a couple errands with a mask so I came home and I had it and 
my wife was like, you're lying to me. Where did you go? Who did you see? <laughs> I was like, honey, I didn't see anyone. Like I literally ran a few errands and I have no idea how I got it. But thank God, um, and somehow one one child, my four-year-old got it and the baby didn't and the seven-year-old and my wife didn't get it and I just have no idea, right? This thing is very mysterious. Um, and so, you know, that was kind of our story, but she's been okay and that's been a huge, you know, a huge plus for us. And of course now with the vaccine, it seems like things are getting better. Um, you know, and then on the personal front, you know, I, I was kind of locked in this studio anyways, so it, gotcha. I didn't really get affected, but collaboration has really changed in music, right? A, a lot of Zoom stuff um, has happened and people that are, you know, writing on Zoom are kind of like, man, I love writing on Zoom, you know, but there's just something beautiful about being in the same room as somebody, right? When you're no, absolutely. connecting and I think we all miss that. And so, you know, that's that's a big hope that we can all get back to that. Yeah, yeah, we talked to some musicians and, um, you know, they they appreciated the time, but as far as as far as getting out there in front of a crowd, and getting that reaction and feeding off off the the people that love your music, uh, it's, you don't. They're like you do it through Zoom and you can't hear anybody and you're just assuming everybody's <laughs> loving your stuff and jumping up and down, but you just don't <laughs> <Yeah>. really know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Barry, you touched on this a little bit at the start of the interview, but you've, you're a huge supporter of our nation's military. Why has supporting our troops been so important to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, my dad was kind of old school, right? Like I've I grew up in a house where he was always reminding me of like, hey, you know, I mean, and it's funny because my kids are the same. They don't know any different from this place, right? They don't know any different from this country. Um, but he was always telling me like America is a really special place, and I didn't really know why. Um, and you know, I've just always had an appreciation for that. I don't know why we all got picked to be born in this country, right? But you know, life, our lives can be very different if we were picked to be born across the world in some other, you know, third world country that's struggling, um, you know, with their government and economics and everything. So um, for, you know, for my appreciation and, you know, that just went right into the mix between baseball and the military because both of those things are so American. And so, you know, my father helped me start something called Strikeouts for Troops when I was playing. And we raised a lot of money and, you know, um, had a lot of visits to Walter Reed and um, helping people and we'd throw events and we got a lot of baseball players involved and we still have some money left. Um, and I take that, you know, being the steward of that very seriously. And so we've dissolved that. Um, and so now I'm pouring some of that into a couple local groups here in Nashville. And there's a great group called Creative Vets. And uh, it was started by a veteran who got out. Um, he was in Iraq, he got out and he went to art school. And it really changed how he processed his trauma, right? His PTS. And so now he has um, a thing where he pairs songwriters with vets. And we'll get in a room with a veteran who can't really say what he wants to say to his family, but we can put it into a song. And so now they've put that stuff into songs and they're making it, you know, radio quality recording and he gets to go home with it. And now they've actually have a partnership with um, with Big Machine Records. And they have like if you tell like uh, Alexa, play veteran music, it will play creative vets songs that were written by veterans and songwriters and other veterans can hear it. And, you know. Oh, I mean, gosh. you guys know, you know awesome. like, yeah, veterans like have a lot of the similar plight of like things they can't say to their family or their wife just doesn't understand. So it's been really cool to like be a part of that. That's excellent. I Good love that. Know. And I'm going to yeah. try that. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. My, Alexa, Me? my Hey Alexa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Well, so Barry, we have soldiers, airmen, guardians, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guard members watching from all over the world uh, today. What words of inspiration or hope do you have for the military community? I just want to, you know, say thank you, first of all. And I know, I know people don't want to hear thank you sometimes, right? I'm just doing my job and I totally understand that. But also, that's all I can say as a civilian, right, is is I just appreciate, even though you're doing your job and you're not doing anything over and above what you should, just thank you for going into that job. You know, thank you for being led to like, to serve and to, um, 
but be a part of that. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of stuff flying around the media and I don't want to get political, but I just feel like a lot of stuff we hear in the media is not how everybody feels, you know. Um, I get more of the temperature from what I see around town or, you know, and it's, I just feel like people love each other and a lot of people and they really love our country. And I get a little frustrated sometimes when it just seems like, <laughs> I mean, America is the coolest place ever. I was just telling my son last night, what makes us different is that you can have an idea and you can own your idea. You can own your hard work. Um, you can own it and instead of somebody else owning your, you know, your work and your ideas. And so that's a really special thing. And, and I think that you all are protecting that, um, the ideal of what this place is. So thank you for that. Absolutely. And, uh, and I agree with you that because um, I, I think I made a post the other day on, on my social media about um, us, us, you know, probably 95 percent of my interactions is positive, but that 5 percent gets the loudest or most attention or most clicks or whatever the case. Yeah. Be. And it, and it's like there's some there's some awesome, amazing people in this world and, and they do awesome stuff all the time. And, and, and they, we just, we don't focus on it or we, we don't highlight it because it's just, we, that's that, that's the norm. We only focus on what the, the crappy stuff that's going on and and so yeah. everybody can have their opinion on it. So I, like I said, I you, you gotta, whatever you wanna subscribe to is, you know, how you're gonna feel. So if you subscribe to positivity, then you'll see the positive. But if, if that's all you're looking for is uh, who messed up here or what happened here, then yeah, that's that, but that's that consumes the airwaves, the media airwaves, which you know is yeah. just unfortunate because there's a lot of great people out there. No, I agree, and I I kind of just like how do we, you know, how do we treat our friends? How do we treat our how do we treat our children? Tr children, you know, if if we did the same thing with our kids, like they would grow up to be disasters. You know, it's like well, forget the you know positive feedback of how great you did today. It's like I'm gonna focus on that one thing you screwed up on, and I'm gonna tell everybody about it, and that's gonna be like your badge of shame on you. Yeah, exactly. It's like we would never raise our kids like that, but like Absolutely. for some reason, it's okay to like do that in society. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's crazy. What now? Yeah. Thank you for that perspective. So, so can you tell us what's ahead for you? We got any new projects you're working on that you can share? Any more um, exclusives? <laughs> yeah, more exclusive. Yeah, um, you know, for me, like I said, the ultimate goal is to to work with artists and to write and produce. But um, I'm just having a great time making the music that I want to make and and singing it the best I can. And um, so yeah, so I have another single coming out in late August, um, and you know that'll be back on the streaming sites. I'm just on those streaming platforms under my name and. Um, and, you know, I'm doing little teasers on social media, like Barry Zito Music, you know, whatever. Instagram's kind of fun because you can, like, I'm learning how to do Instagram, like doing stories <laughs> and all this. Like, it's fun. Like, you can do some yeah. fun stuff. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to be releasing a song every eight weeks. And it's kind of in that same feel of what we just hear, heard here. If you heard the actual song of Broke It, it sounds way different than that. But um, it's just fun music, you know. Get your booty shaking and have a good time. Dance around with your kids, you know, whatever. <laughs> Awesome. So Barry, we want to pause just for a second and take a look at our live feed and the comments that are happening. So um, Andrew says, Barry, you had one of the best curveballs of your day. How did you learn to throw that? Uh, yeah, good question. This is probably going to be, you know, <laughs> sacrilege here, but I started throwing my curveball when I was seven. Um, and I know a lot of coaches out there would not agree. Uh, but for whatever reason, I started throwing mine at seven. I saw the grip in a book and uh, and just started messing with it. And it's weird because my son is seven now and I'm like, my son cannot throw a curveball like, <laughs> by any means right now. So I'm like, how did I start throwing a curveball at seven? I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, I just started, you know, it's like anything, repetition and experience and time. And so I think I had just thrown it for so many years by the time I had gotten to, you know, college or whatever. And it was always my standout pitch. I never had a hard fastball, but my curveball and eventually my changeup were really my standout pitches. Looks like we have some baseball fans that are tuning in. So Michael says, um, hardest batter you ever faced. Yeah, I would say mm -hmm. two answers to that. Kind of one is the first half of my career where I was in the American League and Derek Jeter was just always a very difficult out to get because um, he could hit the off speed and the fastball. Um, and then later in my career, Mike Trout, like 
Yeah. Mike Trout was like different level. I don't yeah, know if I was just like machine. scared of him. <laughs> yeah, he's a machine. I think I was just scared when he got up. So like he was already he'd already beat me mentally. <laughs> but like <laughs> he probably right. like spring training and the and actual you know regular season games combined, he'd probably hit four home runs off me in like fifteen at bats. So I'm like, this guy, I can't figure that guy out. <laughs> Well, over at, on Chief's page, I just want to share a couple of comments from there, too. So Sergeant Rodrigue, she's a, a great fan of the show. She tunes in to almost every single episode, if not everyone. She says, Mr. Zito, you are such an amazing person. And then uh, in reference to your song, the lyrics are great. We have all been there. LOL. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, we all have. Um, and we don't want to be we don't want to go back, do we? <laughs> So Barry, before we say goodbye today, can you remind us where can we keep up keep up with you online and find your music? Um, yeah, so on the socials, you know, it's Barry Zito Music. I'm um, just like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and then um, and then there's Barry Zito Music website, which is just kind of like, you know, do people go to websites anymore? I, I don't know. Sure, um, yeah, we got websites. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, and then just I'm just under my name for like Spotify. And right now, I had some of that country music on there, and I pulled all that stuff down. I'm just kind of starting fresh with this pop sound. So you know, if you do hear that song, broke it. Um, this version is much more. It's like very exciting. You can dance to it. So um, that's on like Apple Music and Amazon and and uh, Spotify and all that. I'm gonna download it. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, nice. I'm, I'm I'm really curious to hear the the other version because that the version you played for us today was was amazing. To be honest with you, it's oh, good. Cool, I, man. Thank you. I watched your your video. Yeah, it's it's good. It has a really good sound, and it does sound different versus the acoustic. But I guess that's the difference between acoustic and not acoustic. <laughs> not, yeah. Me and my music knowledge, dropping it right now. <laughs> yeah. In country music, there's not a huge difference between if the guy's just solo acoustic, because usually that acoustic guitar is in the production. But then in pop music, right, or, you know, whatever, like the acoustic guitar is rarely ever the, the main instrument. But when it is, you know, it's cool. So. Absolutely. Well, Barry, man, I know you're a busy guy and we we are pretty, we really, really appreciate you spending time with us today. Uh, Absolutely. Like I said, you 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 drop you drop some gems on us about just you know pers perspective you you got gave us this beautiful song um that that a lot of you know apparently everybody in comments can can relate to all of us <laughs> all of us has been there so uh thank you for that thank you for spending time this should mean so much to all our service members family members veterans uh, all over the world so man we just we can't thank you enough we and we appreciate your support like those those uh those organizations that you're working for and and like I said, when I get home on Max Alexa to play play me some vet music, yes, uh, and see and see what comes up, man. So that's that's freaking awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, you guys. This has been a joy, and and uh, thank you for thank you everybody for coming to the Zoom chat. That was I had all this stuff optimized for Zoom, and then that new you know I, I missed the bus on the new uh, thing. So this will be the last Zoom, and you guys can jump off into your. <laughs> amazing new place thank yes. you for your flexibility we appreciate you exactly and for yes, everybody sir. tuning in that don't know what Z, uh barry's talking about uh this was probably our last time using zoom for chief chat we're going to a new software with a little bit more bells and whistles because our budget went from zero dollars to five dollars and so <laughs> we're, we're going to maximize that five dollars and, and uh try to do some cool stuff uh, during our interview. So uh, just stay tuned to Chief Chat and you'll you'll see what he's talking about. But Barry, thank you so much. If you don't mind hanging on after the live, uh, I got to get some information. I want to send you something on my, uh, for, for, for hanging out with us. 100%. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank so, you, uh, guys. Chief Chat, Bye, guys. Chat out. Chat out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>